This video continues in our series of getting started with Design Start Cortex M for Xilinx FPGA. In this video, we're going to see how to compile software for Cortex M using Kyle MDK. So, to do this, you'll need version 5.25 or later. So, with the Design Start package that ARM provides, you can't actually compile the software until you create some additional files that aren't included in the package. So, we'll show you how to do this. When we've compiled the software, we're going to create a new bitstream image file that merges our compiled software with the hardware element in an existing bitstream file. This is a much faster way of creating a new image file when you're just making changes to software. And in practice, this will give you a fast method of iterating on your software design and downloading it to the board. So let's start by opening the Vivado project for your Design Start Cortex M processor. We're going to show this process using the default M1 for RTA7 project file that's included in the Design Start package. Before we can compile the software, we need to export a description of the hardware to SDK, which is Vivado's software tool. In practice, you only need to do this once. Unless you modify the hardware design, then you'll need to do it again. So as in our earlier video, we've already built the project and generated a bitstream file. Doing this has given us all of the output products that we need to do this hardware description export. So with your bitstream already generated, click on File, Export, Export Hardware. And under Location, choose the software directory in the root of the Design Start package in your map drive. We don't need to include the bitstream, so you can leave this box unchecked. This dialog will ask you if you want to overwrite an existing file and click Yes, as there's a default file that's delivered in the package that we can replace. So now we can see here in the TCL console that the hardware description file, the HDF file, has been created. Next, we need to launch SDK, the software tool. This is under File and Launch SDK. Then we tell the tool where the exported hardware file is, which is in the software folder. Then we select a workspace for where we build the board support package, the BSP, and this gets used for compiling the software. So again, in the software folder, select the folder for your core and your board, then choose the SDK underscore workspace directory and click Select. Click OK and the Xilinx SDK tool opens. Here it's reading the HDF file that we just created, which it then shows. What we're seeing here is the address map of the peripherals in the hardware design. And further down, we can see a list of the blocks in the hardware. For example, the Cortex M1. Now, a good thing to do at this point is to refresh the repository in the SDK tool. So go to Xilinx, Repositories, and check it's still pointing to the right one. And then select Rescan. So if you've moved it to another drive, you've changed it, or if you've copied it elsewhere, Doing a rescan will always make sure you get the latest version. So earlier we selected a workspace for where to build the board support package, or the BSP. Now we need to build this package, so click on File, New, then click on Board Support Package. Here, leave the project name as the one that's already here, so do not change this. Then make sure you have the right hardware platform selected. So here we want M1 for RTA7, and then select Finish. In the second window, we need to make a couple of changes. First, change the OS version to 6.6, .6, which is currently the only version supported. In the Standalone tab, you need to ensure that the standard in and standard out values are set. Sometimes these values don't get assigned automatically, so you need to check in this list and then select the values from the drop downs if they're missing. Then click OK and the tool will show that it's building the workspace in the bottom right hand corner here. Now we've built the BSP, you may get some warnings, which you can ignore, but hopefully no errors. So let's check that the files exist where we expect to see them. So if we look in the root of our design start package, in software, then the project, and then SDK underscore workspace, and in standalone underscore BSP underscore zero, we can see all these files here that have just been created. Now in this SDK directory, we've built the project using Xilinx tools, which means that it will work for Xilinx tools. 
But to run the project in ARMS Kyle software, we need to add two extra files here to make this work. So in the standalone underscore BSP folder, go to Cortex M1 and then open Include. This folder contains all the header files that are included in the project. So here we're going to open another Explorer window and find the two files that we need to copy in here. These files are in the root of your mapped drive. Open the folder Vivado, then the ARM software repository, then your Cortex M processor, BSP, standalone underscore V6.6, then SRC, ARM, then your processor again, and then ARM CC. And here it's these two X sudo files that we need to copy to the include folder. The next step is to make sure that we have two programs in our Windows path. These are from Elf and Vivado. To find out whether you have them or not, open a command window and enter their name. So for example, from Elf. If you don't have it set, you'll see this. So these are the two paths we need to add. So one way to add paths is to go to Edit System Environment Variables in the Windows Control Panel. Then under System Variables, select Path. Click Edit, then we need to add the path of From Elf here. Here I'll just copy the path and then paste it into the System Variable window after a semicolon. For the Vivado program, you need to add it in the User Path. Click Edit. Again, I'll copy the path and paste it in here. If you then want to check that these paths are picked up correctly, you can type the commands into the command line. Now we have all the files in place so that the example software project can compile. So let's open the project in Kyle. Back in our design start package, go to software and then the project folder you're using and open build Kyle, then double click on the project to open it. So here's the project in Kyle. We can do a quick check here to see that all the files we've just created have been found. So under standalone v66, we should see these files that have just been created. Make sure you have the right target selected, as here we're targeting the board and not simulation. Now we're ready to compile. So to compile, click the button here to rebuild all, and we can see in the bottom of the window that we've successfully compiled and built the software. Now let's check that we have newly created software files from this. So back in our package directory, open the hardware folder, open your project folder, and then again, you should see the new bram.elf and .hex files here. So if we now went back to Vivado and generated a new bitstream, it would pick up the latest version of the software. Now, we don't have to generate a whole new bitstream file as there is a way to replace the software in the existing bitstream, which takes considerably less time. And this way is particularly useful when you want to iterate your design when the hardware doesn't change. So to do this, we need to go to the root of the hardware project and open up a command window here. Here we need to run a batch file called make underscore prog underscore files dot bat. This uses Xilinx's built-in programs to merge the software elf file with our existing bitstream file that we previously created to create a new bitstream. And this should take around a minute to complete, instead of the 20 minutes or so it takes to generate a new bitstream in Vivado. So here we can see it's made a new flash file. And if we scroll up, we can also see a new bit file. Now that we have a new bitstream with the latest software in, and we can download the bitstream to the board from Vivado. So with the board connected to your PC, in Vivado, open the hardware manager, click Open Target Auto Connect. Right click here on the device and select Program Device. We then specify the bitstream file here, so we need to select the one we've just made. So in the hardware folder, then in the project folder, and again, select the bit file. Check the date and time of when it was created to make sure it's the latest one, and click OK, then Program, to load the new image onto the board. So now let's quickly see how fast this is when you want to iterate on your software design using this method. So let's go back to Kyle and let's make a small adjustment to the software. 
So here, let's change the version number in the banner message from 2.9 to 2.10 and save it. And then we'll recompile by clicking the build button. Back in our command window, we can repeat the make command that creates a new merged bitstream file. Once this is completed, so back in Vivado, if we select program device, we can choose the latest version of the bitstream here and upload it to the board. Now here we open a terminal window and if we push the top right button on the board to do a soft reset, we can see the version number is updated and therefore the new bitstream is loaded.